It's so pretty. I'm going to take the ducks and the geese home. Got a big all sun, in the same sunset car. and everything, Heather. <laughs> Bye, duckies. I'm going to miss you and geese. <laughs> Y'all can come live in my my house if you want. We got a creek. This is much better, though, I think. Look at that one. The butt straight up in there. Look at that. <laughs> Y'all like duck butt? Here, look at this. <laughs> hmm. You can't still be hungry. My goodness. My gosh, you guys eat a lot. They're diving for food. Hey, everybody. It's Heather and Leo. We made it to Letcher County. Uh, we're doing a little bit of camping, uh, staying out in the campground uh, by a lake. We've got a beautiful spot. We've got a beautiful spot picked out, uh, several stories over through this way. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of exploring to do. We're going to stay a couple days and do some tent camping and have some fun. Yeah, we're actually in Jenkins. Um, there's just so many stories here. There's more stories than we actually had to shave a few. So <laughs> that's why we're going to stay probably about three days to see, you know, what we can get done to the ones that stand out. But either way, we are here. It's cold, of course. Because yeah. winter won't die. Yeah, we got a heater though. We got our tent heater with us, so we're we're good. So. It'd still be nice to have some nice spring weather, but yeah. it is yeah. what it is. So we're, we're maybe tomorrow. What was it? 30, 32, 32 tonight. 32 tonight something like that. Low thirties. Oh well. Tomorrow'll be pretty though. It's gonna be easy. <laughs> That's where we're going to be sleeping tonight. Shouldn't be too bad. Is it good? Gooey. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so it rained for a little bit which made it pretty cold and rainy but our heaters i mean our tent's nice and heated and wasn't too bad fire's still going that's what matters <laughs> yeah so there's some trails here and that's what you hear as people uh ATV, SXS. Oh, it's just like being at home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everywhere I go, there's a side-by-side. -side. You can leave the hauler, but hauler follows because we're still in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's nice here though, it's really, really, really dark. No lights, which is cool, but also no moon tonight. One big mouthful. So we made it through the first chilly night here in Letcher County. It was a little, no, it wasn't cold at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was cold outside, not in the tent. Yeah, the tent was warm. It was about 37 outside, I guess, but. Look how pretty that is. So we have a few stories we're gonna try to do today, see what we have time to do. They're in uh, Kentucky and Virginia, so. Yeah, we'll be doing two states today. But that's what we came to do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be a pretty day, so I'm looking forward to it. Today's easy. It's really quiet, though. It's got a family or a bunch of geese that live down here that are super loud, but you know how geese Honking. are. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is their, their home. <laughs> the Yambuji, I guess, huh?
<laughs> I, I gotta have my Keurig if I have access to electricity at least. Otherwise, I can I can live without it. No, she can't. But but why should I? Why should I if I don't <laughs> have to? Here's the geese. So we're just having some coffee, and I got my little one of my stories here, just for reference and you know to be organized. It's kind of it's a lot different working in a, a studio, which we you know generally never do. And just doing doing like voiceovers comfortably at home than going on site and doing videos, you know. And uh, it's just a lot more working parts to it, I think. But either way, we're getting caffeinated and ready to go out. But it definitely warm is warming up. Feel like feels like it's gonna be a good day. So we're in Jenkins, Kentucky at what they call the Murdered Men's Cemetery, or Potter Cemetery. This is where the final resting place of the Mullins and company is buried. So it's not just the Mullins family, it's you know, other people as well. But there's supposed to be, why it's called that, there's supposed to be 25 or more murder victims buried here as well. Very unique name, isn't it? Murdered Man Cemetery. It's called Potter's Cemetery, not because of, you know, I thought at first it was because of Potter's graves, but it's actually the last name the Potter, Potter. <laughs> which is pretty common name around here. And it's a pretty famous last name for moonshiners in the area as well. Look at this old stonework. It looks wild, don't it? So I've been wanting to come up here for a long time. It's really cool to actually be able to Yeah, to she's make been it. talking about this for months. <laughs> Whitaker. So I don't know what the deal is with the... the little building? I bet you come up here in the summer, these things are full of wasps. <laughs> Potter. The Potter? Yep. And something poked me here. Okay, Wara Whitaker, Cora Whitaker. Take that one out when you get to it. Look at that. This is Johnny Newsom, 1921-1922, those sweet smiles I cannot see. Just sad. Wow. Wow, well, vines taking over. 1849, Potter. Asleep. William Potter. So this is William Potter, which you can see right here. Letcher County. He was 69 years old, he was a farmer, and he was accidentally kicked in stomach by mule. January 8th, 1919. So we have our first, this is January 9th, 1919. So we have our first accidental death. Sleep in Jesus, Nancy Potter, 1852-1928. Private Lafayette Bentley, Kentucky. Calvary 13, 1841, 1865. Very new here in Bentley.
Bentley Cemetery. So that's just a memorial. And he died during the Civil War. And here's Greenberry Harris. So Greenberry was one of the ones killed in the massacre. Okay. Another fist buried near here in Yeah, Bentley it's a Cemetery. memorial. So who we're gonna be looking for is Ira Mullins, his wife Luanza, their 14-year-old son John Wilson Mullins, who is married to Ira's sister Jane, John Chappelle, who's the wagon driver, and Greenberry Harris, who is 15. He was a hired help. So when this happened, the town of Jenkins didn't even exist. It was established 20 years later in 1912, roundabout. Reuben. Spelled strange. My father, grandfather's name was Reuben, but it wasn't spelled with a U. Or it wasn't spelled R-E-U. Reuben. Mullins. Husband of Lucy Mullins. She's right here. 1860-1919. Notice how someone's repaired that. I've never seen one repaired like that. And this is Lucy Mullins, wife of Reuben Mullins. 1853-1900. She was too good, too gentle and fair to dwell in this cold world of care. Mullins. Right. Johnson, Bell, Potter, Potter, Potter. Gone too soon. Let me check these right here. Potter. Potter, Britt, Joseph, Gladys. I couldn't live without my son, Britt, 1937 to 1993. Joseph Wayne, 1966 to 1993, a truck wreck took me away. Gladys. 1932, 1999, a broken heart. Did you see this? Yeah, I did. A truck wreck took me away. I couldn't live without my son. A broken heart. There's the one year old. Johnson, 1951 to 1952. Bottom it says, "Darling, we miss thee." You see the little lamb, Lorena Wright, 1899 to 1901. Budded on earth to loom in heaven. I think the bee's missing. I'm assuming it meant to originally said to bloom in heaven. Got a couple old ones here too. Is it 1899 to 1959? Lizzie Potter. a picture of her right there. Joe Potter. 1895 to 1965. Rest in peace. Look at this guy. 
He just looks like a big old grin on his face. He just looks like he's a, he was a fun person to know. Mart Wright, 1880. This is Joel Martin Wright. He went by Mart. He was 36 years old. And this is Letcher. August 24th, 1916. And it says, gunshot wound, lung, and spinal cord. So we have a murder. Right here is the article. J. Martin Wright, Jenkins police officer, shot about three weeks ago by Mary Hudson, 16 years old while making an effort to break up the illegal whiskey and beer traffic around Jenkins, died during the week of his wounds. His spinal cord was injured. Wright was taken to the Good Samaritan Hospital in Lexington, Kentucky, last week for treatment, when he was informed by specialists that recovery was impossible. It was then that he returned to his home and spent last days with his family. The affair is deeply regretted. 1880 to 1916. Delana E. Killen, 1861 to 1913. She died as she lived, a Christian. That's the way you do that. It's exactly the way you do that. Father, G. W. Whitaker, 1880 to 1960. Imagine what he saw. A nice long life and a very interesting time period in our country, as a matter of fact. James Potter. We had talked earlier about Lizzie and Joe Potter losing three children, and one of the ones that I had mentioned was James Potter, who was 30 years old, and this is him. Um, he was a coal miner. His dad was Joe, and his mother, Elizabeth, Lizzie, that's in Letcher County, and he was in a car accident of some sort on Highway 23, um, and he died of hemorrhage and a fractured skull 1917 July 26 and he was married to Essie Potter who was 24 years old so here we have another accident Listen at this one. Just listen to this, guys. Remember me as you pass by. As you are now, so once was I. As I am now, you soon will be. Prepare to death, prepare for death, and follow me. That's pretty deep. I saw, I've seen similar a similar saying on grace before not quite the same that's pretty deep stuff right there lena heatley Potter, 1817-1890-something, thy trials ended, thy rest is won.
John Henry Craft. Eighteen seventy six, eighteen ninety nine, twenty two years old, no, twenty one and twenty two days. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And this is David Kraft. Eighteen ninety nine. Sam Potter, 1882, 1959, says, remember me too. We're remembering you, Sam. Bell Potter, 1880, 1944, remember me. Britt Potter, father, 1919, 1966, where the soul never dies, the son's remembered. Okay. So this is Melvin Potter, 1877, 1917. A good citizen, a good husband. Angeline Potter, 1877, 1946. Heaven is my home. It looked like she died one year before him. Yep. Mother, we will join thee in that heavenly land. No more to fake the parting hand. No more to take the parting hand. Martha Mullins Van Hoos, 1899, 1988. Robert Mullins, 1870, 1940. 14. This says Dorothy K, 1916, 2004, and Sam, 1905 to 1990. And the rock says, Mom, Dad. If tears could build a stairway in memories, I'd walk right up to heaven and bring you home again. It's Rose. So this is a son of Sam and Dorothy Rose. 34, 1934, 1937. Alton, Robert Lee Rose, 1944, 1975. You were the sunshine in our home. It broke my heart to lose you but you didn't go alone. Part of me went with you the day that you went home. Versal Rose, 1933-1934. Gone, but not forgotten. Another daughter, Dorothy Rose, 1937-1937. An angel. Poor Dorothy lost a lot of babies. Judy Craft, 1897 and 1897, lived one day. Levi Potter, 1895, 1895, lived January to February, died on Valentine's Day. 
Fanny Potter. This is Eddie Potter lived two days, 1894. Elizabeth, 1892. So this is an article I found that actually includes Elizabeth Potter Belcher. Um, this story is wrote by Kentucky, Tennessee Living. They have a channel on YouTube you should check out. They do a lot of interesting things, cover a lot of interesting topics. Um, but anyways, uh, it says a short distance from Jane Mullins Belcher is the grave of Elizabeth Potter Belcher, who di also died under mysterious circumstances. Both women were married to Isaac Belcher, and their gravestones have very interesting epitaphs attached to them. Jane Mullins Belcher's epitaph reads, Faithful with her trust unto death, Elizabeth Potter Belcher's epitaph reads, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. But that's all it says. I don't really know much more than that, but I thought I would share. Elizabeth, 1892, age about 51. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. So this is Ira Mullins. Ira was shot multiple times in the head, shoulders, and thighs. His wife, Luanza, was shot in the breast and knees. John Chappelle was shot six times. Greenberry Harris, who was only 15, and Wilson were shot through the heart. All the same date kind of brings it home, don't it? The outlaw showed no mercy on the unarmed travelers, even killing the horses, and their life savings was taken. So using the excuse for them being moonshiners, I don't buy it. Either way, this ended badly for everybody. There's five people buried here. And these are real people. It's easy to read the story, but their lives were ended. And you can even see the ripples right here. The human yeah, beings whose lives the, were cut short. You can see them all in a row. And Red Fox also lost his life, so nothing was gained from this. Hold this, you got something on your neck. Bug. <laughs> so this is where their story ends. John, um, John Davis Bentley, 1896 to 1959. We will meet again. And this is Elizabeth Bentley. 1904 to 1994. This is resting. It's a nice long life though. Bet you she could probably tell you some stories, but she could probably do some cooking too. Martha Jane Potter, 1885 to 1971. Gone is the face we loved so dear, silent the voice we love to hear. That's sad, isn't it? It is really sad. Pretty, but sad. Floyd Potter, 1884 to 1960. Gone but not forgotten. You're absolutely right, Floyd. You are not. Lamb spotted this one. <sighs> Backwards a little bit. You can see the little lamb. That's uh, Samuel J. Bentley. 
1923 to 1932. Safe in the arms of Jesus. You see these like this, and you just gotta kinda wonder what happened. You know, like the, um, you know, the 18, 1918, you know, when we had the flu epidemic and stuff like that. And you'll get in a lot of these graves in uh, 1918 is a very prevalent year for death dates on tombstones. You see a lot of those 1918 in children. But now this one here, I wanted to, I always, whenever I see these marble here, these are, these are military. This is Kearney Stewart S1. I'm not exactly sure what that S1 signifies. Maybe, you know, one of you guys could answer that a little bit, answer that for us. U.S. Navy, World War II, 1925 to 1994. At least he got to, the good thing, Kearney got to live a, got to live a life after the war. A lot of our veterans didn't come back. This is, I'm gonna fix her stuff. I'm sorry. Straighten it back out. Some of her stuff had fell, fallen over. I'm gonna put it back the way it was. This is Ruth Stewart, 1935 to 2012. This is Eldon B. Embry, uh, 1927 to 1986. And one directly behind it, I noticed. This is Bernard Sargent, Private U.S. Army, World War II, 1917 to 2006. This is the good ones as far as veterans go, because simple fact, that date right there means he didn't die in the war. He got to come home and have a family. This is Mona Jean Embry, 1932. To 1980 in loving memory there's the sergeant right there there's Bernard and then they've got the war plaque right below it but his wife Marie is right with him I didn't see that 1924 to 1991 she's right there with him I didn't even see that Fairchild, Roy Hobart, 1935 to 2003, and Wanda Lee, 1936 to 1993. Mom and Dad below them. And there's one there. You can see the. You can see where it's at, but. That's the marker. A little rock just barely sticking up out of the ground two or three inches. But you can see where the grave is definitely there. And there's more here. You can see them there, 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 there. I only see a couple stones here and there. But there's more graves here than there are stones. Which is, you know, fairly common in a lot of these older graveyards. A lot of them... You know, you'll find the graveyard and there are just a couple markers in the entire place. Pedestal where a stone, a headstone once sat right here. All that's left is the pedestal that the stone sat on. This is George W. Potter, 1871-1902. to And there's another one laying flat. You can see that one's fell over, laying flat. 
and it's broken in the middle anyway. That's okay. A, this is a husband and wife. This is Easter, wife of Levi Potter, age 63 years, lived in church 17 years. She was the sunshine of our home. And this is Levi Potter. Uh, January 14th, 1848 to July 10th, 1926. And it says the same as hers. It says she was the sunshine in our home. And his says he was the sunshine in our home. Spring is springing, beautiful flowers. Jesse, Ulysses, 1910, 1976, Elsie, 1909, 2005. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 Andrew Brown, 1903-1946 Just look at the size of this tree here. You can see the hole where it used to stand, where it used to be. Look at how big. You can see that's, well, standing beside of this thing, it's up to here on me. That's how thick it is. That's how tall, how thick this tree is. But you can see where it just smashed the fence, knocked over a couple stones too. It's like it just caught the corner of that one and just barely missed this one. Georgia May Roberts, 1906 to 1940. She is not dead. She is just away. So I figured it'd just be easier to show you guys this. Uh, so this is Georgia May Roberts' death certificate. She actually went by Eva. Um, I assume it's Eva Georgia Roberts, but either way, this is hers. Um, birth date December 31st, 1906. She was 33. Um, same parents, same death date. And it seems like it's bilateral pneumonia um something six and a half months this is heart failure and it looks like here contributing causes premature is at labor and it looks like some kind of operation so it just looks like um she had a lot of bad things going on that just didn't end well so it's kind of nice. And this is, this is the one the tree caught. Luckily it didn't do any real damage, it just knocked it over. It just needs to be reset. It's Glenn Avenel, 1923 to 2005. And Richard T, 1919 to 1973. And this, the lamb, you know how those stand out, little lambs. You know what that is before you get to it. This is Kitty Lou Glenn. I'm sure that Kitty Lou, they had big plans for Kitty Lou to go to school or be a lawyer or doctor or whatever. 
Life isn't really fair, is it? Uh, it's, life can be beautiful, but it's not necessarily fair. This one got not completely over. There's two underneath here. All I can see is W-Y and the name Laura. That's all I can make out on that one. We're almost there. This is Webb. Kathleen Webb. 1919 to 1985 and Arley 1916 to 1989 this is Willard Mullen father and Mary Mullins says mother her date is 1901 to 1946. That's not a very long life. And his is 1896 to 1946. They both died April 28th. Hmm. Same day, same year. April 28th, 1946, both of them. And this is George Mull or excuse me, Glenn Mullins, Kentucky Private Corps Military Police, World War II, 19 December 25th, born on Christmas Day, 1921, and died February 3rd, 1945. This guy's is probably one of the real a, a World War II fatality. So, it's worth mentioning. It's well worth mentioning. He, he earned it. He deserved that. Kenneth Paul Bates, 1938 to 1955. Stella M. Bates, 1920 to 2006. It's a fairly recent one. This one here, I was heading over for this one too. I saw the brass, military brass, from the ways back. This is James Bates, Tech 4. I'm not sure exactly what that signif signifies. U.S. Army, World War II, 1909 to 1975. Well, guys, we just want to thank you guys for coming along with us today on another little adventure out into the wilderness, looking at some old graves, telling old stories. So we, I was hoping it'd be warmer tonight, but it's actually still cold. <laughs> I should have waited one more week till my birthday weekend. But today was beautiful, so whatever. Good enough. So we had a pretty good day. We got lots of stories done. We're actually ahead of schedule. Yeah. And now we're back at the campground. Gathering firewood for tonight. Yeah. Ready for dark. Well, it's Monday morning and we survived. <laughs> we did have a, an issue or two on our little trip. Uh, last night, we were getting ready to go to bed. Had the fire going, you know, all this good stuff and the heater decides to die. So we had no heat last night. It was like, um, 
high 30s low 40s something like that it was pretty cool but i just hyper insulated the tent the bed and used my little candle heater i didn't bring the buddy heater or the diesel heater we brought an electric heater since we had an electric site but i didn't count on the electric heater dying <laughs> But uh, it worked the first night. The fan was a little bit noisy. The second night, the heater would not start. So we had no heat whatsoever last night. But uh, we hung out around by the fire till about uh, about midnight, something like that. Hyper insulated the bed. I had like two inches of blankets. But anyhow, it's a beautiful place. Just a, it's called um, Fish Pond Lake. Uh, it's uh, beautiful really pretty place it's not a great big lake but man it is nice look at that there's all kinds of little places like that where you can go fishing and right up here the camping area you can camp right on the lake for five dollars a day you can't beat that five bucks <laughs> the only thing i don't care for well i won't say i won't i don't care for but the only thing you know they could have had not all of the sites not all of the sites have fire rings only some of them do but uh i brought my little fire pit thing with me so we used that last night you know no open fires so we brought that and it's you know barbecue grill y'all have seen it before <coughs> but it was a lot of fun we like to get we would like to get you know a pool camper you know so you could go places and do this sort of thing and you know you don't have to set up and tear down and all that kind of stuff and don't have to worry about hyper insulating beds at night just in case but who knows you never know we may you someday get a sponsor or something some camping company put a big put their logo on it and turn us loose that'd be cool wouldn't it <laughs> but anyway i just wanted to kind of show y'all around a little bit show you the place look how pretty it is beautiful beautiful place this is way back in the country too and uh if any of you are trail riders not only to check this out let me get over and show you they've not only do they have the beautiful lake for fishing right the camping areas this is um this is actually technically this is the rv camping area here you can see the rv sites going down and we're in the last rv <laughs> but you've also got right back there and there's a couple other entrances too You've got trails down through here. You can bring your side-by-sides or ATVs and stuff while you're camping. You can camp and fish and ride trails and all sorts of stuff. Right. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you coming along. Thank you a lot. See you next time.